Hello, welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, and human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out, unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now, here's your host, two-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kosowski. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we talk about leadership, business, and human potential. And I am so excited. This podcast has grown substantially just because of the feedback that we've been getting from all of the listeners and audience. And we continue to serve you in such a big way, always getting ideas from our listeners and our audience. So today we are talking about habits, serving or sabotaging your success. Good habits are the key to all success. Bad habits are the unlocked door into failure. And that's by Og Mandino. We all have habits. Some habits serve us and some habits sabotage our success. Some habits we are aware of and some we are unconscious of. Habits are often referred to as a settled practice or tendency in the way that you do things. It's your usual way of behaving. It can be as simple as your morning routine and your nighttime rituals. Many of the habits you have developed, you have not even noticed until the results in your life start impacting you. When things are going great, you feel good. If things are not, are not going so great, you may start to realize that something just needs to change. There's no sense in pointing fingers at others, blaming or complaining about why you have not gotten the outcome that you want. Um, don't even attempt to come up with excuses. You need to start looking at how you are responsible for those results and making a change. What's working? Really start thinking about what is really going well. What is not working? What do you need to stop doing? Are you compulsively checking your phone? Are, are you delaying projects because you think you don't know enough? You need to get more knowledge? What do you need to start doing? What makes a habit good or bad? Look at your outcomes. Bad habits are those actions or inactions that you take a negative pattern of behavior that does not serve you. Examples of bad habits are procrastination, overspending, gossiping, Interrupting conversations, mindless eating, watching excessive amounts of television, staying up late, not getting enough sleep, skipping breakfast, being short-tempered and being reactive to situations. Good habits are those habits that you put in place to support you in achieving the goals that you want. You plan, prepare, and execute. You work from thoughtful questions. You work with a budget, you speak well about yourself and about others, you actively listen, you eat to fuel your body, you limit your TV watching and use the time to read or get exercise, you ensure that you get enough sleep to function well, you don't skip meals. Before reacting to situations, stop and recognize how you feel. You take a deep breath and wait a few minutes until you've calmed down in order to respond. In the meantime, you may be asking questions to gather more information so you can understand the nature of the issue or concern at hand. When you are angry or upset, your brain doesn't think rationally at all. It goes into a protective mode and it can shut down any rational thought that you have. And you're in a reactive survival mode. Ever seen someone upset? <laughs> Ever watch them try to, to calm down when, or make a decision when they're in that peak state of stress? It's not a pretty sight. So don't go there. Take a deep breath. What a deep breath does, it interrupts that cycle. All of a sudden, there's this fresh flow of oxygen, and it's like, oh, something disrupted this pattern of thinking. And all of a sudden, it can start calming someone, start slowing the pace down. 
and really getting yourself into a place where you can choose to respond versus react. It makes a huge difference. What habits are serving you? What habits are sabotaging your success? And are you getting in your own way? So really thinking, I, I've added a few more habits that could be impacting your success. And I really want you to think about them. Are you late to meetings? Are you late for work? Are you late to appointments? Thinking about how that impacts you, but also the interactions you have with the people who are waiting on you. Not being prepared, going into meetings or presentations when you haven't done the work, or going to do a talk and you haven't practiced it. These are not things that are serving you. Skipping the gym, oh, you know what, I got too much to do. I'm gonna skip the gym. Can you fit in 30 minutes? to do some kind of physical activity so you can look after your body and get your body in the state it needs to be in. Using your cell phone in bed, staying up hours of the night, watching movies, texting, you know, checking your cell phone compulsively, waiting to see if someone likes something so you can get that dopamine hit. You know, all of these things can be sabotaging your success because you're not paying full attention and not being present in the moment to conversations where there might be an opportunity for you, you're gonna miss it. Forgetting names. We forget names because we're not present in the moment and really thinking about or even using some association as to why that name is important to us to make us remember and think about it. How about breaking promises to yourself or others? Let's say you said, I'm going to the gym today. And you have another commitment with a friend. So, but you need to shift one thing. Are you going to cancel your thing with the gym or are you going to cancel the thing with your friend? Things come up in life and we do need to adjust and we do need to adapt. But you need to keep commitments to yourself. They're just as important. Or to family members. It's easy to say, oh honey, I need to cancel our movie date. Make it a priority. And treat those appointments on your calendar as just as important as the work that you do for others because in the end they are spending too much time online surfing the internet getting caught by those blue links that take you from this link to this link to this link or getting caught in the social media wondering what everybody's up to and then all of a sudden you have fomo the fear of missing out really are you missing out or should you be working on your own stuff Saying yes to everything. When you say yes to everything, you often are saying no to a lot of the things that you need to get to do. We were saying yes to everybody else, but we need to start saying yes to ourselves. And also criticism, that negative self-talk, something doesn't go as well and you keep telling yourself, oh, I knew you blew it. You know, that is a bad habit instead of, you know what, man, you sure learned something. You'll get it next time. Give yourself your own positive self-talk reframe it and reframe quickly rearranging and instead of decluttering you can have piles on your desk and you shift this pile to that just looks a little bit aesthetically better but is it decluttered no it's the same stuff just move to a different pile so really thinking about is what i'm doing the actions that i'm taking is it serving me Misplacing your keys. We've all done that at some point. But if you're doing it continuously, you're losing a lot of time from doing what you really need to be doing to get done. Blaming or complaining. Binge watching Netflix. I know people who start watching Netflix and all of a sudden they're into series nine. And, you know, stay up late because they couldn't get away from it. So really thinking about the time you're spending. Is it productive? You know, it's great to reward yourself. I, I've gotten, gotten rid of TV myself. I watch a movie on occasion, and I don't remember the last time I actually sat down to watch a television show. There's too many other things to do that I can use my time more effectively. Borrowing and not returning things. How many of you have borrowed something and forgot to give it back? Finishing people's sentences. There's one person that I speak with on a regular basis and before I finished it, you know, they've already have a speculation or finished off the sentence. And, and you know, it, as a teenager, we thought that was cool. We're such close friends, they finish our sentences.
But in a leadership role and working with others, when people are finishing your sentences continually, it devalues um, the conversation that you're having with other people. And you're not allowed to express yourself because someone's expressing for you. And even though they might be on the right train of thought, it doesn't make it right. And also being a workaholic, all work and no play is not sustainable. And when you do that, it has an impact on the relationships around you. So, you, you know, you've heard some of the stories that someone comes home from work and says, sorry, we left with the kids. You don't have time for us. Don't put yourself in that position. Make sure that you're making time for work and play because the people and the relationships that you have in your life, they really do matter. And emotional shopping. It's just like emotional eating. Are, are you buying things that you don't need? Are you buying them just to make you feel good? So what you need to do is change some of those habits, but change takes time. And it's not an overnight fix. Many of the habits that you have have developed over a series of time. And the easiest habits to break are the ones that you do not have an emotional connection to. They have the least meaning to you. So think of something that you need to change that has the least meaning to you. So if it went away, you really might not notice. Okay, so here's some questions I want you to ask yourself. And you can go into the show notes and grab these questions for yourself if you want to journal them. But what I want you to really think about is these following questions. What is one change that you can make that would make the greatest difference right now? Think about it. You already know what it is. You might not want to admit it. But thinking about what is that one change you would like to make, okay? And are you ready to make the change? Because if you're not ready, you're going to buck the system. You're going to have that resistance. So instead of resisting, because resistance can persist, think about being open to the opportunity about what this change is going to do for you and what you need to do to actually get ready. What's it costing you not to make this change? Do you really like the results that you're getting? Okay. What do you need to put in place to ensure that this change is successful? Do you need reminders? Thinking about those things. Do you need to avoid certain situations? And how motivated are you to make the change? Why is making this change important to you? And how confident are you that you can make this change? And what would make you more confident? What are the barriers in the way of making this change? And what can you do to eliminate or navigate those barriers? What benefit will you gain from changing this habit? Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going, is what jo Jim Rowan said. Everything around you is a re result of the habits that you have, the everyday choices you make. And if you want to make a change stick, you want to put reminders such as sticky notes or even setting an alarm on your phone. Experts say it takes 21 days to change and create a new habit. I say go for at least 30. And the reason I say that is 21 days is kind of that breaking mark. But when you can push through to 30 days, you know you've got this. You are creating new pathways in your brain. So what it's like is like that wheelbarrow. So when you take a wheelbarrow on a fresh part of grass as an example, you're going to go through and there's never been a path there before, but if you went through the same path over and over, suddenly you've created a new pathway. So the same thing happens with your brain. So when you are creating these pathways and doing new habits, what you need to do is consistently do them. So remember, you also want to make sure that that action sticks. And in order to do that, you need to reward yourself. And it might be as simple as acknowledging your win. So you're giving yourself positive affirmation. You're telling, what a great job I did. So you want to be doing some of that. Or it could be as, you know, it could be, could be bigger than that. That if it was a significant change for you, you might go buy yourself a new outfit or you might go to a game or go to a show. It's all the small changes that really make the biggest difference. So start by choosing habits that will support you in achieving your goals. What I'd like you to do is print off a calendar. You can find tons on the net. And what you're going to do is print off a 30-day blank calendar. And you're going to start tracking your progress. Start with a small change that you want to make. 
they are more believable and you're more likely to follow through. So let's say you want to declutter a room and the thought of it just makes you feel overwhelmed and it could take hours. Think about this. Do you need to spend hours or can you spend 15 to 30 minutes every day for one week to declutter one room? It might take longer, but make it a realistic. So you're thinking about smart goals, something specific that you're going to do. How are you going to measure it? So we got this tracking tool and that it's realistic and achievable. So if you can dedicate that 15 minutes a day to really getting what it is you're trying to achieve, you will see what will happen. It's a lot more doable, isn't it? What gets measured gets managed. That's why I'm telling you to use the calendar. Changing a habit requires consistent action. And if you fall off track, simply just get back on. Don't beat yourself up. Just say, okay, what did I learn from this? What do I need to do differently? And carry on. And the more you work the plan, the greater success you are going to have. So let the habits you put in place serve you. It's not about sabotage. I want you to put in your success habits so that you can achieve everything that you would like to. I would love to hear from you how you have changed some of your habits so that the people watching the video or listening to this on iTunes can, can go over and look at the show notes and then they're going to see what you've done to put habits in place that are going to serve. We'd also love for you to go over to my, I would love for you to go over to my website at www.debrakazowski.com. There is a special gift there waiting for you, the MP3 uh, download of the 10 Surefire Strategies to power up your productivity and performance. So, you know, with you listening to this, I know you're a high achiever and you would love to streamline your performance and your productivity so that you could be delivering and doing your best work. So go there. It's a free gift from me. And if, and if you haven't gone there yet, you're missing out on this jam-packed audio CD with nuggets that are going to help you create that shift. The other thing is I'd love for you to email me. Let me know how this podcast has impacted your life, your business, your organization. And you can do that by going to Deborah at DebraKazowski.com. And I want to thank you all for listening to The Millionaire Woman Show. Um, because with you, this is why we do this. And I'd love for you to go over, give us a five-star high five, or write us a review there on iTunes so more people can learn about this podcast, share it with others. And there's, it's so powerful when you can say, you know that podcast you referred me to? Well, you know what? I've been listening to it and I've been implementing some of the things that Deborah has been saying or her guests have been sharing with us. And it's really changed my life. Wouldn't you want to be the game changer? Again, thank you for listening today. So great to have you on the show. Make sure you're choosing the habits to set you up for success, not to sabotage you. Because you need to go out, as Muhammad Gandhi said, go out and be the change you wish to see in the world. And my message is for you, go out and make today great. Live your life rich from the inside out. Have a great day.